We have reached the point in our service where we remember the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I would like to direct our attention this morning to Paul's words in Galatians chapter 6. If you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand and men will hand one to you. If you don't own a Bible, you may keep this. It's interesting that when Paul writes to the Philippians, he rejoices that the gospel is preached even by people who are trying to cause him trouble by doing this. But when we, and the reason is, is because they were preaching the true gospel. But when we come to Galatians, he has no tolerance for false teachers. Twice in this book, he says, if anyone preaches any other gospel than the one I preach to you, let him be accursed. And he even goes so far as to rebuke the Apostle Peter when his behavior was such that it muddied the clear teaching of grace. Why was Paul so concerned that the Christians in Galatia stay with the true gospel which he preached? Well, it's because anything else is detrimental to them. False teaching nullifies the grace of God. It deflects one from glorying in the cross to glorying in things that are temporary, things that you can see and do. The false teachers who were, caught, who were troubling the Galatian churches were teaching that you must be circumcised to be saved. Paul is concerned that if they are derailed from holding to the true teaching of salvation by grace through faith, they're undercutting the very means by which they can live a godly life. So Paul wrote this letter to the Galatians to keep them on track with the true gospel. He sums up his letter in the verses which we're going to consider this morning. So if you'll turn with me to Galatians chapter 6, verses 12 through 16, you can follow along as I read. Those who desire to make a good showing in the flesh try to compel you to be circumcised simply so that they will not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For those who are circumcised do not even keep the law themselves, but they desire to have you circumcised so that they may boast in your flesh. Never may, it, may it never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither is circumcision anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation and those who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. In these verses, we see a contrast between those who teach that circumcision is necessary for salvation and those who believe that the cross of Christ is the only means of salvation. The false teachers are boasting in the flesh. They're not genuine keepers of the law. They concentrate only on out, the outward aspects of the law, circumcision, and they're depending on and glorying in something that they can do. And, uh, and Paul knows that the cross is the only thing he has to glory in. He glories in what Christ did for him on the cross. He knows that through the cross of Christ, he has made a clean break with his former ungodly life, and he has entered a new life. False teachers are operating in the realm of the old order under the law. The law could not save anybody, and it was not meant to. It was meant to point to the need of a savior. The true gospel operates in the realm of the new order, and that's the new covenant which God had promised in the Old Testament through his prophets. Under the new covenant, men's hearts would be changed. And obedience would be from the heart. The cross is the means by which a person is transferred from the old order to the new order. That is why Paul writes that neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything but a new creation. Only through the cross can a person who is hope helplessly tra uh, trapped in slavery to sin, can he be changed into a new creature made into the likeness of God. Notice in verse 16 that being a new creation is not only a new condition, it is also a new way of what to walk. It changes behavior because it changes you. Is it any wonder that Paul de depends 
on the true gospel with such, and, and he defends it with such tenacity that he makes the cross his only boast. Another contrast that we see in this passage is the difference between those who, uh, the, the false teachers and the apostle when it comes to persecution. One of the motives of the false teachers in promoting the circum circumcision is so that they would avoid persecution. Had they taught, as Paul did, that circumcision is not necessary for salvation, their Jewish friends would have persecuted them also. But by adding circumcision to the gospel, their Jewish brethren did not bother them. <clears throat> in contrast, Paul says in verse 17, From now on, let no one cause trouble for me, for I bear in my body the brand marks of Jesus. Persecution was not a deterrent to Paul's preaching the true gospel. He had the marks to show for it. Stoned and left for dead at Lystra, he rose up and the, the very next day goes into the next city and does the same thing. He had received numberless beatings and was whipped by the Jews five times with 39 lashes because of his uncompromising proclamation of the gospel. Paul had been commissioned to preach the true gospel and to suffer for it. He gloried only in the cross. So Christian, as we partake of the Lord's Supper this morning, may the cross of Christ be our only boast. As we partake of the bread and remember the body in which Christ suffered and died for our sins. And as we partake of the cup, we remember the blood which he shed to redeem us. Let us examine our hearts before we partake. If there's any sin, let's confess and repent of it. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we can partake with a pure heart. If you are here this morning, but you have not come to faith in Christ, and you do not trust in him alone for your salvation, we ask that you let the bread and, and cup pass you by. The Lord's Supper is a memorial for those who have been redeemed. But please consider that Jesus Christ and his death on the cross is the only remedy that God has for lost humanity. Realize that apart from him, you are lost. You're hopelessly lost, and you're not even able to please God. You can do nothing to remedy your situation. Apart from Christ, you're ungodly, and, but it's ungodly people who are the only ones that God has ever justified. Christ is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. So receive him today. The men will come now to serve us.